In this program, what we're going to do is we're going to create a recursive algorithm to count up, which is a little bit more complicated than counting down just based on the natural uh, natural way that recursive algorithms uh, sort of come together. So in this one, um, what we're going to need to do is we'll have a method call, uh, we'll call it count up. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start it at a number. So we're going to go from one to five. So we need to send it the two values, one and five, so that it knows where to begin and end. So when you're creating your, um, your method here, so it's public static void, and we're going to call it, of course, count up and you need to uh, declare an n1 and n2 variables um, that will be the beginning and end however as as we go through um, i just it's my preference to uh, refer to them as n1 and n2 okay so now we get the work of creating a uh, recursive expression uh, for how we're going to count up and we also need to figure out what the base case is so that we know when our recursive algorithm is going to end. So what is this doing? Let's put a comment here. So it is going to print the numbers uh, numbers from n1 to n2. How are we going to do this? Okay, so if we have now we're, I'm going to use the, the function notation uh, that we've seen before. Um, and if we're going from one to five, uh, it's going to look like this, of course. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, now, the first thing that we're going to do, so f of one comma five, uh, actually, let's go uh, i comma n. This will uh, this will help us frame this a little bit better. Okay, so if, if we just put uh, generic variables here, uh, we know that we're going to start at i. It is going to be followed by i plus one, i plus one, uh, dot dot dot, uh, finishing off with n um, minus one comma n. So essentially we're uh, counting up from the number i to the number n. So our recursive statement is going to kind of look like this. So if I'm going uh, 1 to 5, the first thing that this is going to do is we'll try to program it this way. We're going to print a 1 and then we are going to run a function that will print the numbers two to five. And then uh, what this is going to do is if we have our function, uh, I'm not going to expand the entire thing all the way out. Uh, then our function two to five is going to print the number two and then run a function uh, on the values three to five and so on and so on. So what does our recursive statement look like, uh, our, our expression? So a function of i comma n is going to be the value i and then the function of i plus one comma n. So n in this case is not going to vary from one to the next. Uh, it'll just uh, keep going on and on and on. Okay, so the this will keep on going until i is essentially n and then we'll just display that last one. So um, this is the base case here. So what we're going to do is if um, n1 is equal to n2, what we're going to do is we will system.out.println 
uh, N1 because we we know that we're on the last um, iteration of this recursive algorithm because I is gradually going to grow into until it is the size of N. Um, so if N1 is equal to N2, what we're going to do is we're going to print, I mean, it doesn't matter which one of those we print out, uh, N1 or N2, and then we're going to return zero, which is again, um, what I commonly like to use as an end statement, uh, if we don't actually need to return a particular value. Okay. So our base case is. We've reached the end when n1 is equal to n2. Otherwise, what do we do? Uh, so as stated here, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to print um, n1. So um, I am similarly going to repeat this. Uh, so we're going to system.out.println n1, and then we are going to return. Um, now, this is where we're going to make our recursive function call. So this is going to be count up, and then we're going to do n1 plus 1. So i is our first value here is going to grow, and we're still going to keep the second value the same. It never ends. Uh, sorry, it never changes. Um, so let's see if we get the result that we were hoping for. So if I run this, uh, unexpected return. Oh my gosh, why did I make this void? Uh, we're going to put that as an integer there instead. Okay, so there we go. It goes one, two, three, four, five. Um, so uh, yeah, the, I guess the lesson there is don't forget to uh, keep the correct type in. Um, now we can actually customize this pretty easily to count different amounts. So if I wanted to go from three to 17, for example, and then run it again, As expected, I get the numbers from 3 to 17. So this one's uh, just a little bit more complicated uh, because our method here uh, requi requires two parameters in order to do its work. Um, but essentially, the process is the same. Uh, you need to figure out what your recursive statement is going to look like, which will help you program this. And then you have to figure out your base case. So the last thing before we end is uh, I just want to point out the type of recursive algorithm this is because, uh, again, recursive algorithms is a just a gigantic um, a field of different ways you can solve problems. This is called tail recursion. And all that means is that the recursive statement is at the end. Uh, now this is preferable. The preferable way to do that is to put the base cases on the top. We won't always do this, but put the base cases on the top and then put the recursive statement on the bottom. Uh, the reason for that is just like the way that you declare your variables at the beginning of the program to make them easy to find, uh, you make your recursive statements easy to find by always putting them uh, at the end of your multiple choice uh, statements that you have available. Uh, so we're going to continue to use tail recursion uh, in a lot of the future examples. Um, but this is a, a this is a pretty good example of uh, counting up.